Welcome to Euro C Sucks, the weekly podcast where we review and critique the best and the worst fan-created original characters from the My Little Pony fandom. This show is unscripted and unfiltered, so moderate language will be used. As well, this show can be a little heavy on the critique at times. That being said, if you are easily offended, don't watch. If not, feel free to join us for this week's show. This is episode 53 for March 13th, 2015. This week, we have a lovely special guest that we all heart a lot. My name is Mollify Thunderbirds. I am the host and show manager. I am joined by Commander Sparkle, assistant project manager. Uh, it's smooth sailing, and I'm the editor. This week we have a very special guest uh, that we all heart a lot. She has amassed a compressive amount of subscribers on her videos, and she's. Uh, has a lot of videos breaking down all the different uh, aspects and ideas behind this, but we don't want to delance around the topic so long. So this week's special guest <laughs> is I love Kim Possible a lot, or KP. Oh, that was that was that was beautiful. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that. That's, that's adorable. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome KP. Welcome to the show. We're very happy to have you on. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so, woo. Uh, like we said, we're an OC review show, and we, whenever we have a special guest that has a somewhat noted OC in the fandom, we like to talk to them a little bit about their OC. So, this is like an intervention kind of thing. Kim, you have a problem. You, you, <laughs> we need to talk. Brown and yellow do not go together. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. We're, it's because we're your friends, or I guess random people that come and find you on the internet. Yeah, sure, why not? Because, yeah, because, be because much of those better random assholes if it was on the a internet, red, I think we could say something. A red alicorn with black hair. Oh my god. Oh my god. And has a twisted backstory. Tell us a little bit about your OC. Uh, some people have uh, actual, like, uh, uh, more of an avatar to which they just live through. Other people have, like, an act- just a storyline behind their characters. Like, what happens with... What, what's the story behind your OC? Um... It's the first one. I just kind of lived through it, and it's just me as a pony. I mean, like, um, I get a lot of messages about how um, they want to use my pony in fan fiction, which is fine. But they're like, well, what about the backstory? What, what's her name? Is it really Kim Possible? And I'm just like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's me as a pony. Don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. So, um, <laughs> You're just like, ha, backstory. <laughs> backstory done. Yeah. That's so, just um, that's just the best way of describing it. It's just how it is. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it just it just me as a pony. I don't, I don't know. I have um the 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 yellow in the hair is because I I have brown hair with blonde highlights and it kind of looks more blonde than but it it makes sense to me. So anyway, and then blue is my favorite color and then the cutie mark is Kim Possible animation faces winking and that that's it. Uh not wrong. You explain, yeah, you explained that a lot in one of your videos about what your key mark means and how uh, the show Kim Possible has really uh, inspired your uh, interest in animation, right? Yeah, you are a fanboy, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am. And you have a Burmese python, right? Um, uh, my parents hey, do. Hey. I don't. Hey, 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 hey Mollified, you got, you got a little uh, something on your nose uh, what, 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 what is it? What is kind it? of Burmese oh, oh python is it? A yellow one? Very. No, what's that ca- called? A uh, banana one? No, it's a, it's a albino one. It's special. Ah, special little snowflake. So he's not your number one fan. I believe that's about it. But we're not we're not technically done learning about you yet. We're gonna through this episode. We're gonna learn about your opinions and whatnot about other people's OCs as well. What kind of OCs you like and what uh, you think makes a good and bad OC. So. Like we always do, we're going to start off with good OCs this week. Now, Kim, do you want to uh, go first or be added to random die of fate? Um, whatever. I can go first if you guys want me to. I mean, it, it's up it's to you. It's your choice. Okay, I'll go first then. We we are indifferent. <laughs> You're just like, whatever. We do this every week. No big deal. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool, guys. It's cool. I mean, if you want us to go first and show you how things go about expressing our opinions and how to tell people about <laughs> how to bullshit so hard. how to critique and analyze the things, I mean, of we'd be more than happy. My Little Pony character. We'll, we'll explain the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. You see, you see, 
when you do this, you have to do this, 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 and this, but not in this, 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 this order, but in this, 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 this Should order. Should I be taking notes? The you test is in quizzed. five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, since you ha- uh, seem uh, don't really care, then I guess I'll just throw you in in Mitty's position. So, if I roll a three on my die, that means you get to go. So, rolling the die of eight, we roll a four. So, that means Smooth gets to go first this week. This is Trinket Bird. She's fun-loving, somewhat scatterbrained. Her, she has a nickname of Hummingbird for a reason, um, because she just likes to go around everywhere, do things somewhat loud in cases, um, both in volume and opinion, um, and likes to adhere to family values, uh, but still likes to not judge others. Backstory-ish stuff. Um, she was born in Cloudsdale, but her family of both her mother and father being Pegasi because living in Cloudsdale. But then they decided to, you know, since the Cloudsdale education system, as far as we know, is, hey, look, flying. And there's also flying. Did we mention (laughs) that Cloudsdale is pretty much just flying as far as we know? No! Whereas when they moved to Ponyville, there's at least general education. You actually learn things. What? what? Learnings for scrubs. Her mother was a collector of things. I I believe they're considered medals. M E D A L, I think is how it's spelled. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to visualize the word. Anyway, point being, but she was missing a certain medal, like a bronze star. Um, so, uh, trinket bird. Um, decided to try to go out and find this specific metal. And she kind of went all around just being like, hey, do you have a thing? Hey, do you have a thing? Hey, do you have a thing? Oh, you do have thing? What can I trade for it? Oh, I don't have that thing. So basically trade you <sighs> the episode. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's it's specifically said in her description that's basically trade ya the episode. <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> and eventually through a bunch of bunch of random stuff going 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 finally got everything it's like oh thank goodness i got it hey mom look i got this bronze star for you and she was so proud and friggin her mother was just like you went through so much trouble just to get that for me you're the best and you can keep it at you if you want i mean i mean you earned it and she got her cutie mark, which, which is... is for which is for finding specialty things um, and collecting items so a that others may not want in re- trinkets. Trinkets. Yes. I mean, like, it's not no, sort of. It's only Maybe. a hoarder if it's in excess. Yeah, or a dragon. <laughs> which going which going into more history about her? We did it did. It did. It did. She turned. She it turned did. into hoarding. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> sorta. When when she um finally did uh, move a few, I think, I think it mentions more than once, but I it could be just the wording messing me up. She did move at least once, and it became very arduous because she had hoarded a lot of stuff and like, no, I can't let go of this. No, I can't let go of this. But this is thing. I can't let go of this. Life became a little difficult. But then, after a while, she was like, you know, finding all this stuff, I mean, not all of it's, like, incredibly important to me, but it could be important to other people. So, a mile or two outside of Ponyville, which is the exact um, measurement given in here, you would be able to find a junkyard, which she now owns, but she doesn't, like, consider it a junkyard. She considers it more of a... uh, A cache of treasures. And the slogan is, if it's not my treasure, it'll be someone else's. So it's a heaping load of shit. (laughs) No, it's a bunch of treasure, you loser. It is a giant mass of random crap. Well, like... You're so rude. It's pretty random, but... I think it's cool. I I think it's a good story. I, I like this. It's a good story. 
I like the idea of a collector pony because we don't see that a lot. And it's something that really, I don't know, you, you, there's a lot of like trade ponies who are like painters or, uh, or, uh, so fun quill sellers or, uh, these random like little trades that they have. You never see a I think collector pony. Uh, I think uh, sort of when you were going to the whole, uh, how it's not really, it's not hoarding until it's in excess. I, I like the fact that it almost does push that boundary because it sort of adds to the, like, th- th- this, like, flaw within the talent of the character. I think it adds a lot of depth to her, which, um, I, I definitely, I- I'm glad that they included that because it makes them not seem like, oh, hey, here's my character who's absolutely perfect. Uh, mm. It's like, oh, hey, this character actually, it's like, moderation it shows that it, it is a character that in itself just shows that you you need some level of moderation or else things can get a little bit iffy she does she definitely put a lot of time into the um like thinking about the personality which i think is interesting um it could have been a little more developed and um i do like this the th- and and my description didn't do it justice i apologize <laughs> it's all right but the i mean uh, damn it aesthetics are hard i mean i like the whole thing about how the kitty mark like she gave like a meaning towards it like you know she gave it just like oh look cool on the pony you know it like it had meaning which was i think is cool but that's it's a good idea yeah. usually having a usually, kitty mark that you know, actually right? means something <laughs> this looks <laughs> cool so i put it on my butt also, for aesthetics, I'd like to say really quick, she's really freaking cute, oh my goodness. It's true. It's been too long since I said that. Jeez. It's true. Look at that! <laughs> Look at those faces! Look, Look at those calm. faces! You need to calm down. <laughs> I like her color palette. Yeah, the color really palette's good. really good. It's, it, it, it blends well. Yeah, everything is back. Everything is nice and somewhat muted colors. It's not super saturated. But then she uses, or I guess Rowan Inc. They use like a more saturated version to like give definition to the hair. In her description as well, um, there is a thing that's the um, her hair is never the same because uh, she kind of goes like, and it uh, and it just kind of somewhat stylizes, but it's never exactly the same twice. The the general style that is represented here, though, is really cute. <laughs> like, yes, I really like the level of purple that she has in her scarf. That is a nice purple. I, um, one hundred percent purple. Yes, thank all the you. purple. <laughs> I, Indeed, I, I, I it like is purple. That the, I like that the bronze star is on the scarf. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's Indeed. cool. Uh, uh, the like the little piercings are are nice. They're not too excessive, but they add that sort of flair that sort of I get from the personality. I think it's a good way to visually represent that. Um, I I don't know if it's just uh, Ronin's style though, uh, but um, I noticed that there's no like whites in the eye. Oh, no, the like no no like there's no, there's no light reflection. Oh, the reflections, yeah, yeah, like the. The the whites of the eyes and the light reflections are two very different yeah. things, Commander. Come Shh. On, get it together. Get it together. The, the white Shh. spots that are on the fucking, like, pupil. Whatever. There you go. I don't care. Shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean! <laughs> Normally, it, it, I, it doesn't look as good as it does here, so I feel... But I feel like Ronin can get away with it if that's what she's going for her style, because it doesn't really detract from anything, but it's just a no- thing I just sort of noticed. She's able to do it, whereas others, it would look weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes it looks kind of dead. This pony is incredibly cute. I think she does things really well. I don't really have anything to fix. Um, maybe, I guess, the background color of this thing, because the gray is kind of weird under the colors. Maybe? And that's nitpicking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which apparently is perfectly fine in Silver Cole's eyes. <laughs> so... Moving on from that OC on to the next OC. Thank you, Smooth. We're going to roll again, and we rolled a one. So that means it's time for my good OC. Uh, this is Light Nocturne by A Nightly Pony. Uh, his nicknames are Nox, Light, Tracker, and Dude. He is a very cocky bat pony who is a tracker. 
he works for the equestrian army or uh, guards in uh, Canterlot. Um, he he is very dedicated to his job, but he tends to be egotistical, lazy, rude, uninterested, uh, a weird uh, pony. Uh, but and he's often found sleeping on the job. I don't know if that means, like, he's sleeping on the job because he's a knight or he's a bat pony. So during the day shifts, he would be just like, oh, I'm completely wrecked or what. But or whether he's just a lazy asshole. I'm thinking it's uh, going to be because he's lazy, but he's very dedicated to the equestrian uh, I don't know, military or the Camelot Guard. Royal Guard? Uh, yeah, Royal Guard. That's it. Why was I blanking on that so much? I'm like, <laughs> this is know. a thing. This is a thing. I don't I don't know. Anyway. Um, Got those nerves, though. <laughs> going into a little bit about how he is a tracker, using his bat sense, he's always able to pursue or uh, track down people who is uh, who are like either running away or are in flight or like a cop. He's always able to like get in and find them due to his bat sonar abilities and being able to uh, hear very well. Uh, it says that um, I can't remember where I said it, but he is very highly unlikely that uh, anybody is able to get away once he's on the trail. Um, he also apparently has terrible manners, as that and that he uh, that often caused irritations to his older sister, uh, Florent Grace, and his and he often teases his little sister Arya. And I always find it I, I like it when people make uh, siblings for characters because it uh, creates a more fleshed out world behind it. I mean, if that's not to say people that don't have uh, siblings aren't, you know, real world or whatever, but it just adds like this character has more uh, yeah. depth, more stake in the world that they live in, so to speak. Um, and yeah, uh, what do you guys think? Um, I think it's nice that like they're it, they're balancing a lot of his. Um, like his good traits, like the ability to hear, and um, with with a lot of faults too, and um, I think that's interesting and that's good to take note of. Other likes that Light Nocturne has is that he likes music, playing pranks, his family, lots of booze. booze. Ayo, I thought this was the a ladies. show for kids, man. <laughs> Not a lot of that booze. Hey, you'd be surprised with some of the OCs we've seen. Yeah, uh, ladies, or I guess the mayors. Oh. Oh. Uh, flying, football, working out, going out, watermelon, junk food, video games, exploring. Did, His dislike. Did they just say like watermelon is a like? Watermelon is a like. Okay, I thought it was he, like you know, used for a verb for a second. It's like how do you watermelon? Yeah, how, how do you watermelon? <laughs> no, but well, that's a good you question. Get, well, you get your water and you put it on the melon. Oh, you watermelon. Uh, uh, Anyway, his dislikes, on the other hand, are sunlight, rain, losing, military parades, overtime, being mocked, and not taken seriously. And if you're going to be, like, lazy, sleep on the job, all this stuff in the military, I don't think you're going to be taken too seriously. Like, I get that he's loyal, but that just seems like, like, with every, I mean, I'm not in the military. I know a few people who are. That doesn't sound like any kind of military I would uh, uh, would expect. It might be like that kind Absolutely of thing where not. they they ha like when they're working they have a different mindset than when they're not working. So maybe that's so, that's the excuse. Yeah, so he, so, one of the things he has is sleeping on the oh, job. Oh, then yeah, he's yeah, his yeah, ass like, is like, fired. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's my point. I'm like that's it, it seems he's like lucky that he's still employed. I know a lot of Marines that kind of fit this mold. I'm just like, yep, yep, that's. Hating their job, lazy. Yep, I know those guys. But um, not to say that all Marines are lazy. Don't don't take that opinion. I just all know a couple more. Marines just are some. lazy. No, no, no. You say something about one of them. It's the same thing about all of them. No matter what, you have to learn this mummified. Damn it! That's how definitely. the internet interprets things. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Damn it! If if you have an OC, you're a terrible person. Wait, shoot! Dang it! I <laughs> shit. <laughs> um. No, but but. Another th thing uh, just that like, I found interesting is, like, 
So he's good at tracking because he's a bat pony. We know that there are bat uh, more than there's well, there are bat ponies in the Royal Guard in the sort of Luna division. We don't know much aside from that canonically, but it it seems like what what about him being able to use his like bat pony abilities makes him better? Because uh, like d- d- is it just that he, he likes could just, tracking? He could just be better. Well, he could he could just be naturally talented at it, or maybe yes. he took a little more time and and enhanced those skills more than some others did, just but, because it's something. It's an that... evolutionary trait, <laughs> but a lo- evolutionary so? trait that can be honed and possibly yeah. uh, exercised and strengthened. You're saying just because they have it and we don't, all of them have the same exact ability in it? God, that's no, racist. But wow. Like... That's racist. Oh my god. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Taking my words and turning them against me. That, you know that's not what I meant. So, I love the fact that this character has a nice, cool color theme to it. I find that yeah. it has, like, a lot of bat ponies have that cooler, darker color scheme. And some of them work very well, but the, or, and some of them are uh, god awful. I really like the idea that this one's incorporating a lot of the same colors in both their cutie mark and in the uh, pony itself. The deep dark purples, the blues, navies, and the lighter baby blue as well to kind of give it an accent. Also, he carries a spear that's pretty cool. Looks like Grim Reaper, kind of. Yeah. Spears are cool. There's so many colors in his mane. He holds it with his hoof? That seems uncomfortable. I feel like he would... I guess... Technically, technically they don't really hold it, I guess. It's more like uh, laxing your arm on it. To How keep does he it fly balanced. with that? It... How does he use it? Yeah, that's a better question. How do ponies grip onto things? I don't know! I imagine there's some, like bonding process like a chemical bond or something oh I thought you were saying saying he like took his spear out to like lunch <laughs> had a couple oh my of God. He, you know it's just like <laughs> shut the fuck up hey man you wanna go grab a, have a beer chink chink alright let's go I I sort of like his cutie mark just gonna go, go but uh, but at the same time it's a bit complex for me. Like it's, it, way it's too detailed it, it, mainly the wing yeah the wing is definitely no matter like, how cool it looks it's I yeah, mean, it's a cool to, symbol. To be, to be not a great in, cutie mark. To be in the show, it's way too detailed, but I like how it looks. Yes, I would. I would agree. The color scheme's cool. Like, like the 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 two different wing colors on the wings, and how that kind of goes with the with the main colors. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. There is a there is a giant amount of recycling <laughs> colors here, and I like it. Yes. But when those colors start to overlap, because they're on very many movable parts of the body that can overlap very often, like the tail over the cutie mark and over the wings, or the wings over the tail or the cutie mark and stuff like that, or his mane. Mm, maybe. Just on while well, we're sort of onto these whole color things, the, uh, like I, I think in terms of a four color um mane and tail it's they're pretty decent but that darkest one is just a bit too dark for me i don't get the po- is that a ponytail i feel like it's that the ponytail is a little much yeah yeah i can agree with that it's just it's a little bit out of place yeah it seems like his hair works better with just chopping it off yeah right like if you cover your, you put your hand over the ponytail it, it just you know i feel like if the hair if they want like, to do a ponytail they should have like they should have made the at least the bangs longer, so it looks like it was all like supposed to go in a ponytail, not just like add it on. Yes, stylize yeah. it so that it should. I, I I agree. I really like this pony. It's a really nice. It's a very cool pony in more ways than uh, once. Uh, and I really believe that if the only thing that we would uh, suggest, like we said, is maybe get rid of the ponytail and rework the cutie mark a little bit, so it's not so complicated. But other than that, from my own per, uh, perspective, I think it's an alright pony. I love the backstory. I'd like to see it uh, develop further. Not to say that it's lacking, but maybe see more from this character, uh, as always. Because um, <clears throat> we just we like this pony and we just want to see more of it. So, uh, congratulations on this one. We really like it. But 
Oh, uh, not quite done with the good OCs yet. We're only halfway through good OCs, so let's keep Whoa. it rolling. Oh. On to the next one. That was a one. That's a four. That's another four. That's a two. So looks like we're going to be saving our special guest for last this week. Sad uh, we're going to take a look. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. Hey, we're saving the best for last. Hey, oh, there we go. So, the OC I'm bringing this week is Milk Tea. Uh, Milk Tea, who, with the nickname Milky, is a uh, gender ambiguous ca- uh, character with uh, whose pronouns are they, and they're a bit older than the main six. Um, and uh, as tall as it says, as tall as Twilight. I'm not sure if that means Twilight pre Alicorn or post Alicorn. So probably post Alicorn because it specifies Twilight. Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling that. However, I would clarify that just as a small little aside. Um, their occupation is that they uh, serve tea at their mom's shop, and their ki- the cutie mark is a cup of tea with some steam coming off of it. Um, the meaning is, I mean, tea. <laughs> I, I feel it's a bit self-explanatory. Uh, personality is generally calm, cool, soft, uh, soft-spoken, quiet. I, I'd, I'd go so far as to maybe guess introverted character. I mean, feel uh, sort of that's sort of the. It matches the sort of, like, tea feeling. Um, but, uh, anyways, Milk Tea is a generally quiet unicorn who, uh, has a passion for brewing tea. And they originally got into this because, uh, their, their mother owns a, uh, cafe and her and her, uh, her brother and, or their, their brother and mother would always make, like, either, like, chocolate, like, desserts or just different, like, like, cafe sort of things. And, like, Eventually, Milky wanted to, like, have some way to contribute and try to, like, make some awesome new drink that would, like, be able to get on the, put on the, me- or be put on the menu. And it didn't go really well. And there was no, there's pretty much nothing came of it, just except for failure. But. What do you mean crunching these chips into the soda doesn't make a good drink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm just imagining of like a really like a a less pseudo drunken um Applejack just tr- mixing things that don't belong. <laughs> then a- after a few months of trying this, um uh the her, their mother ended up getting really sick and because they felt so bad, Milky decided I'm going to go make her some tea, make her feel better. And there was no just, like, standard, just like, hey, here's some tea, you can have, make tea, left. And so, went out, was like, I'm gonna figure out how to make tea, and just, like, like or, or at least something that, like, try and make something with tea, and just sort of started, like, getting things that they figured would go work well with tea, probably had seen people do it before, or ponies. And it ended up tasting really great and uh, helped her mother reco- or their mother recover and ended up having it sold as a special in the uh, shop. And that was when the cutie mark was received. And I really like that story. I, I, I thought, I think for that story, the thing that I liked the most about it is that they, they had that, that passion of what they thought they would wanted to do and they totally failed at it. <laughs> <laughs> which sounds really bad but i just like it adds uh, it adds shows that th- there was a uh, like a challenge that had to be overcome mm-hmm. to be able to get to the actual talent it's not just like oh hey i tried this thing and on the first time i got my cutie mark look at how cool i am guys <laughs> it kind of reminds me like of rarity because like even though even before she got her cutie mark she was still making clothes and dresses and stuff but it's only when she really challenged herself that she actually got it yeah, I, I, she just I, I like that now, put gems on absolutely <laughs> everything and got her. Well, they had to get <laughs> because <laughs> everything needs it. I, I was gonna say, yeah, like it, I feel like that was just rarity not being recognized for talents, and this is like I sucked. <laughs> oh, this person, Silver Boy Twenty Seven, has has made a decent amount of uh, OCs and sort of like the the actual family members of Milky and as well as a bunch of others and. Some of the, the is I like it really. I am still trying to exactly understand exactly how it works, but um, there's they have an alternate universe within their relationships of their characters, where in one of them like like kind of doesn't know them, and like another one they're like the subject of to, uh, to a prince or or and stuff like that. I I 
it's i don't really know the, they have universe... their own different alternate universes with within, these ocs yeah yeah within the universe of their ocs creativity man yeah I, yes i, I definitely helps, think it's a it cool helps thing. bring out character interactions because in one universe characters don't even notice each other and logically wouldn't considering their histories however in the alternate universe they would actually meet and be friends anything can reasons. happen <laughs> Yeah, not. I, I definitely think it's uh, it's really nice, and like we were sort of saying earlier, having multiple OCs is like a, a, a like that are related in some way is nice. And this this person definitely uh, has a bunch of OCs that they've tied together in one or two universes. <laughs> well, they definitely took their time as far as trying to figure out what to do. I think this pony, for the most part, is super adorable. And the thing that I'm going to say before at first is I love these accessories a lot. Particularly that hat. It's really cool. <laughs> I just realized it's a cup! It's a fucking teacup. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's a top hat. And then I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Like, you get it? It's, it's, a, get it's, a it? Bit, it's a bit ridiculous, but it's just so... It's cute. I like it. I've seen more ridiculous. Really, a really cute pony. Uh, in the words of Smooth, I really, I really like her, or them. Um, I was gonna agree with that because I, I definitely like the green that they use. It goes well, well with the hair. Um, it's strike. It's surprisingly similar to hair to my OC a little oh, bit. Yeah. I didn't even think about that until like just a few seconds ago. Either. Like, should I? <laughs> First thing that popped in my head. Uh, people stop copying me. I know I'm amazing, but no, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> um i'm cool it's okay it's all right i definitely like the little accessories and they they go with the cutie mark pretty well like the little like bow tie thing it kind of has a little bit of a western flair um the little i can see that western, and um i think that's it um no alicorn so that's good and yeah just like it all goes together like the hat and the cutie mark and the tie and it's it's, it's beautiful they're super fancy. Super du- yeah, so fancy to wear a top hat. Cute? Did I mention cute? <laughs> super cute. Yeah, you said cute. <laughs> I really like the idea that they put on the cuffs and have a little tiny button on it. I, I really like it when ponies try to be uh, fancy or have, like, clothing accessories. Because sometimes you may see, like, a wristband or, you know, a little tiny vest or uh, kind of a suit style. And it's always great whenever I find that. Or whenever we find an OC that uh, has a little bit of clothing. Because it just adds that little bit to the character. That just Of course kinda... you'd think that. Well, <laughs> it's, not it's not like, like your OC is half based. <laughs> or is it like based around that? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, but I definitely I, I definitely agree in this case. It, it, I definitely feel, or I feel that it adds it adds to the character's personality. Sort of uh, like adds a, a, a quirky factor for sure. Especially with that hat. Which I want to know where they got that hat, or how, like how they came into possession of that in for like a story thing, because that's just like I want a backstory pro- on that hat, man. <laughs> that hat, that, I need, I need a fan fiction on that hat. <laughs> we need the hat story. I need a ship I need the for hat that story. hat. I, w- I want to know its life. I like the, uh, I really like the cutie mark because it, like. I would almost like when I was looking at it, it was like kind of with the uh, the little thing hanging on the side. I was like, not a hundred percent sure, but then I was like, that is the perfect way to differentiate that from a coffee cup. Yeah, and I I think that it works pretty well. The, the having the small little squiggles for the steam is simplistic enough, and I think it works really well. As I've said before, pony's really cute. I really like the. Uh, the story as a whole, I like the, the having faults as well as having uh, a strength and stuff. I might add a let's say add a little bit more to like personality and other stuff like that. However, I feel like with what there is there, even though there's not much specifically stated, I feel like I can, I can get a lot out of the character. So that's something I really love. And that top hat is still super awesome. <laughs> right on. So, Kim, you have sat. And listened, waited patiently. So patiently. But now, all the bullshit. now is the time that we get to take a look at what you brought to the party this Yay. week. So go ahead and tell us about your good OC this okay. week. I'm not gonna lie, I just I just go on aesthetics, but um I guess Pixie Dust. It. And um she's a cute little earth pony 
with like she's multicolored and uh, let's see personality pixie is a very muddling pony and very very protective of her friends and loved ones she tends to be tad temperamental and sulks over petty things even when everyone else is over it i do like the color scheme i feel like how it's kind of muted but it still has a lot of color especially in the main colors and um like she's kind of pink and like she's she's like she's like that's the way if you want to do a rainbow pony that isn't rainbow dash that's how you do it because, holy crap, she's got, like, even little Applejack dimples. She's so cute. Um, and then the cutie mark is, um, it's a little brighter than the hair, but I think, for my criticism, I either make the, the cutie mark the same colors as the hair, or make it even brighter, because now it's, it, now it's a little bit hard to see, even. Um, with that, like, very light coloring of the, of the, the mane. Um, so, I think she's, and then maybe the, the dimple marks make them black because they're brown, and there's not really any other brown besides the outline of the of the pony, so I'd make them a little different color, or maybe like a yellow to go with the hair. Um, as far as personality, um, she seems, it's pretty basic. Um, I wish, like, the mother, maybe have the mother motherly trait be explored in the cutie mark a little bit, because I don't, I don't know what that cutie mark means, it's just, it's just kind of there, so maybe it does mean something for that, but I, I don't know. Um, she has, like, one pro and one con, so maybe a longer, more detailed backstory. Well, since we are talking both, uh, aesthetics and, uh, We just kind of put it into one. Oh my goodness, she's so cute! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing with, uh, these kind of ponies. It's like, uh, they're... Just because there's not a whole lot of backstory never makes them necessarily bad ponies. It just, you know... It, it could use probably a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, that's, that's it. At least she had yeah. something, you know? Oh, yeah. A lot of people try to do the Rainbow Mane, and they try to make it a lot like Rainbow Dash, and unfor- it doesn't work because everybody now knows Rainbow Dash as Rainbow Dash, and if you try doing a Rainbow Mane like Rainbow Dash, everyone's going to be like, oh, you're trying to be like Rainbow Dash. I see how it and is. And be like, no. Yeah. But this one is able to do it with a different style and definitely stray away from it without being instantly compared to Rainbow Dash. I'm gonna I'm gonna point out something about the Rainbow Mane that hasn't been said right so far because it says in the description that the talent is watercolor. Look at that mane and tell me that does not make you think watercolors. Yeah, it makes me think of watercolors. It which does not make me think watercolors. Which, Come on, smooth. Like the col- the the way maybe not the way the colors always blend, but the like the how the colors are. I I I get a watercolor feel. The thing like that. that really bugs me about the mane and tail isn't the colors; it's the intense intricacy of it. Make that again. Can't. Yeah. Can't. I'm thinking about how I could vector this, and I'm just like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nope. I had a hard enough time just making a a gradient stroke for Silver Quill's icon last week. I was like, not possible to make this this again. (laughs) That's the true challenge. So, though it looks incredibly cool, this is impossible to recreate. I would say tone down the intricacy of it. Like, maybe have specific braids that are specific colors or stuff like that. Don't have all of the colors go in at such angles and into each other such ways that make it it's visually beautiful, but this cannot be replicated. To, so, to sort of, uh, like, contrast that is a, a, an alternative, or an alternative way of going at it. Gosh, I said it right the second time. Um, but, it, but have it sort of that, like... And obviously this wouldn't make sense in a sort of real life situation, obviously, but have it so that the, the colors are sort of, are generally there in the same, the same kinds of colors, but they're sort of just like they're different, like a, just a bit every single time. There's no like real set definition or definitive shape or way that the colors move. That could be a, a way of doing it without getting rid of the intricacy, but it can go either way. Her eyes are really cute. Yes. In closing, um, yeah, I'm keeping some of the criticism in mind. I think she's cute in concept, but like animation wise, she just just no, no. Um, impossible. <laughs> impossible. That that's the true challenge. Is it Kim Possible? Get out. 